It is time to do a little work on the old governator here. It works like it should as far as when you load down the tractor, it advances the throttle, no problem. But the spring here, it's every, stick my hand right in the way, the spring here is all floppy. It should be snug. The lever has some play in it. Now we've got an oil leak where the fitting goes in. So I'm just going to pull the whole mess off and clean everything up and see if I can't readjust it. So we'll take off the two linkages there, the one going to the carburetor. I've already pulled the one off to the throttle quadrant. We'll take the oil line off and then there's an upper and a lower bolt. And that should take the governor out. Hey, we've got the governor assembly off here. Right in that spot there is a small screw. Remove the screw, and that will let you be able to pry this center housing out that has all the guts in it. Just put a screwdriver between the housing and the gear and gently gave it a shove. And that takes out your ball assembly. That moves like that. And inside there, you have the fork assembly. And there is a roll pin here. There's a pin there that we need to knock out through the oil passage there. And that will let the fork slide off and we can get the arms off the side. So I'll knock that pin out. All right, you've got a seal and a little needle bearing in there. Here, this part rides on a housing there, and that's where a lot of the slat slop was. So we'll see about shimming that up. First off, clean everything. See, I'm not planning on replacing any parts in the governor because it does work right just going to adjust it, but I'm going to go ahead and take it apart. Everything turns smoothly. The balls don't look like they're too messed up. So we'll pull this clip here. And that will let this assembly slide off. This has got a bearing. Keep that together. Then this comes off. Definite sludge everywhere, but not much. That looks okay. Doesn't have a bunch of grooves worn in it. The balls have got flat spot here and there, but they are working properly. I'll set them there. Now, I'm not going to pull that down any further. I'll just clean this up as is. We'll put it back together. Things cleaned up decently well. So we'll go ahead and slip this assembly back together. That's a little shim stack to adjust the preload. And then the clip. Okay, set that out of the way. Now we can work on the arm assembly. Well, I didn't have anything for this go around. I probably will pick up a basic rebuild kit. 
Just put a new bearing, get the new seal for this. It's mods and end parts. Not a pressing matter right at the moment. Now we need to do, I want to do a little something with this because it's just, it's got quite a bit of slop. Probably not hurting anything, but just like to shim that up just a touch. Let's see what I can find. Okay, and the little piece of shim brass under the bottom. Still moves good, got most of the slop out of it. That'll work for now. So now we've got to hinge up this along with putting the spring in. And we're getting ready to, got this lever on, much nicer fit. Want to make sure this slides on good. There's a little burr there where the hole went through. I touched it up with a file. So we'll begin sliding this piece in. We'll get this sliding on the shaft there inside. And then we'll hook that together and finish shoving that in till you get the hole lined up. Right there for the roll pin. And we will tap the roll pin back in from this side. Ford came to the realization that on the earlier models, there was nothing over here. I was just all blank right there. It's hard to get that roll pin out. Apparently, somewhere along the line, they, you know, you'd normally have to drill and tap a hole. Well, they ended up drilling and tapping a hole for you and putting a plug in it. And then later on down the line, they put the oil fitting in there. So here's what I was talking about on the levers. That spring is supposed to be snug. It's not supposed to be like stretched or preloaded, but it is supposed to be snug. And it is not. So I'm going to, the adjustment is to bend the ears on the spring a little bit. We'll see how that works. That's pretty much got it. There's no uh, free play, but it's also not uh, preloaded. So now we'll put the guts back in. Go ahead and put a little grease on that surface. Remember, you have the little divot there. It lines up with a little divot on the case. Right there. And it is back together. Now we'll put the screw in that hole to lock it in place. There we go. That's the action of the balls moving that lever back over. All right, I've got to cut another gasket. Because like I said, I wasn't planning ahead on this, so I don't have a gasket, but I can cut one. And I've got to clean up the tractor, the area where this goes, and then we'll be ready to reinstall. Oh, got to put the oil plug back in there. Make sure it fits tight. I mean, you don't want to over tighten it, but I'm going to put some Teflon tape on it. 
Then we've got a new gasket cut and ready to go on there. Put the oil fitting in. Made sure to use lots of Teflon tape. You do not want to over tighten that because being pipe thread, you could end up cracking the housing, but it does need to be in there tight enough that it doesn't leak. But that doesn't have to be very tight because it's not a pressurized fitting. It just uh, free flows the oil into that housing. So keep that in mind. Just don't tighten it so tight you end up breaking your governor housing. Okay. Got everything hooked back up. Well, except for the uh, proof meter cable. I've got a new proof meter and cable. I haven't put them on yet. It'll be all right. Short bolt goes on top. Long bolt goes on the bottom because it goes all the way through the housing. Gasket goop on both sides of the gasket. Now we're going to attempt to adjust the linkage. Okay, we got the governor all cleaned up yesterday. Now we need to uh, adjust the throttle arms here. There is a stop right here that contacts the governor body. What you want, wind's still howling out here. What you want to do is when you've got your throttle at the end of its travel up here, you want this to be up against the stop, which it is. It hits the stop right as you run out of travel up top. If you need to adjust that, you've got an adjustment on each end of the rod. So get that set right. That's the main adjustment on that. I mean, you tweak the spring. We've got the spring where it's, like the book says, there's no preload on it in the middle position, but it's not flopping around either. So right now we're going to take off the carburetor and we're going to clean it up and service it, put a kit in it. So what we need to do there is take off, there's a choke linkage here, and then your throttle linkage comes down and take it off. Actually, I'll probably take it off here just to make it a little easier to get to. And you have your fuel line, clamp for your breather, and then the two nuts here. And it should come right off. Undo the fuel line, make sure to turn your fuel off. We'll have a little spill out from what's still in the line. Up here and take the governor arm or the throttle arm loose. And two half inch nuts on top. All right, we're ready to head to the workbench. I know some of you are going to be shocked, but my workbench is actually clean. It doesn't happen very often. But like a thousand times before, I claim that I'm going to try to keep it that way. There's stuff. I need to pop off. The throttle there. And we're going to drain the fuel out of it drain screw on the bottom take it out and while that's draining we'll go over a couple things this is your idle stop screw you can adjust that to set your base idle so let's adjust it to get it at idling at 400 rpm which I'm assuming that's probably why I, what I need to adjust because mine dies when you pull the throttle all the way back. Other adjustment, this is your idle air. Screwing it in, it's kind of backwards. Screwing it in cuts off the airflow, so that makes the idle richer. Normally when you screw a deal in, it makes it leaner, but on this one, it cuts the air instead of the fuel, so it makes the uh, idle mixture richer as you screw it in. This is your main power needle. It's more conventional. The farther you screw it in, the leaner it gets. And now we just need to take the body of it off and we'll pull these valves out. 
little damn little newspaper in case we get any more inevitable gas coming out. I'm going to pull both of these needles, and the factory setting is one turn out to start with. What I'm going to do is screw them both in till they bottom just lightly, counting the turns, so I'll know where they were. There's a half, one, one and a half, not one and three quarters. Let's give that baby plenty of fuel. We'll take this out. Needle's a little scuffed up on the end. Now we'll check the idle. Same deal. It's supposed to be like one turn to start. Then you adjust everything once you get it running. There's a half, one, one and a half on it. Pull it completely out. Put it aside. Now we've got four screws on the top. Now first, let's take this elbow off because that shouldn't have a fuel strainer built into it. And it does. There's a little bit of crud on it, but not much. That fuel tank on that tractor is actually surprisingly pretty clean. Okay. Four main body screws. Now make sure you have a kit of some kind to put this back together, Chris. You'll end, you definitely need new gaskets on everything. And that'll have all the O-rings, everything wear part related to put it back together. So we got that apart. There we go. There was a little bit of crud in the bottom, but not bad. Now, we'll pull the float pin out. We'll end up setting the float when we put it back together. Float pin, float and valve. I don't know if these tractors originally had a steel, completely steel needle and this has been upgraded, but that has a Viton tip on the end of the needle, which seals much better than just all metal. Let's set that aside. Peel off this gasket. Got the Venturi. Note which way it goes, it's shaped different. The, the wider tapered section goes up into the carburetor. Set it over there. Gasket. Now I'm going to have to look in my kit and see. I think there's packings and stuff in this throttle shaft. But man, that throttle shaft is nice and tight. Same with the choke shaft. So we've got another little metering assembly here. And that would fit into the Venturi. That's probably your main main fuel feed right down the or right up the throat since it's an updraft carburetor. Yeah, that's exactly what that is. So we'll pull that out and then we'll start cleaning everything up. Okay, it takes a three inch three eighths inch socket. And there we go. Emulsion tube, you've got little holes on the side. And it has a gasket where it fits in. Make sure you get a new one of them in there. Let me go get my kit and see what all parts it's actually got in it. Okay, the kit has your, has your body gasket gasket to go to the manifold and it has a new throttle shaft 
We'll probably go ahead and pull the throttle shaft and put that in. Then in the pack here, that needs to come out. That is your where your float needle goes in. That's the seat for it. So it's got a new needle and seat, Viton tipped. It's got all your little gaskets and O-rings, little packing or something, and a new pin for the float and a new seal probably for the throttle shaft. So we'll go ahead and take the throttle shaft out and the uh, needle seat. Penny ain't worth much anymore, but it does fit right in there to pull that seat out. Well, the screwdriver blade just wasn't quite long enough. And then of course got a gasket on the bottom of it. So we'll set that with that part there. Let's look at this throttle shaft. Got two brass screws to hold it in and there are new brass screws in the kit, which is very helpful because they uh, definitely could get stripped off. Two screws. Throttle plate comes out. And the throttle, it's, throttle rod comes out. And that looks like where that little seal goes. And we got that out of there. Yep, that's what the little seal's for. I was hoping so, it looked a little different. There's also an idle jet there that we need to take out. Have to go get a different screwdriver. Well, unfortunately, the low speed jet is not coming out of there. It was starting to uh, starting to peel the brass back at the screw deals. I put a little heat to it. That didn't work, so we're just going to leave it. Uh, I will hose everything out with compressed air, make sure it's clean. Then it's not going to make any difference. I'll. Uh, Probably pick up a spare jet sometime and just throw it in the uh, parts bin in case I ever need it. But as long as everything flows through there, it's not going to matter if the jet doesn't actually come out. All right, now everything is going to go get a little bath in Berryman's. To clean it up. There we go. Now while that's soaking, I'm going to go see if the Harley will run because it's a dang nice day outside besides the wind blowing. All right, we got the body all cleaned up. Everything was sprayed with carb clean. All the passages were cleaned out, blowed out with compressed air. You do have a main jet down in the bottom of that hole there where the emulsion tube goes in. Make sure I didn't pull it out because I figured it was going to be like the pilot jet or about like the idle speed jet and not come out. But I did make sure it was perfectly clean. Blew air through there. Now let's start reassembly. We'll put in the packing, the little seal there for the throttle shaft. Oh, and after cleaning all this, I hosed everything down with WD-40 because being cast iron and since you've been... Since it is clean, it will end up rusting quickly, so that's why everything's shiny and wet. All right, the little packing seal here. I'll put just a touch of grease on the seal and the shaft. New throttle shaft. Slide it through everything.
And the wide open stop arm was built a little different. And I was trying to make sure it wasn't binding on anything. And now we'll take the throttle plate, place it in there. Maneuver it to where the screw holes line up. And the kit came with new screws. See if I can't get those in there. I'm just going to snug them down. Work your throttle a few times. That will help center the plate up to where it's in a tappy spot. Then hold it closed and tighten up your screws. Make sure it still is all the way closed. Now, I'm going to go in with a punch and stake the back side of those screws slightly to where I don't have to worry about them coming out and going into my motor. I think the throttle plate's good. Now we need to transfer the throttle stop screw. Unscrew it. I think there is, I think that screw over there is a replacement, but we'll need to use the spring. Yep, that's what that screw's for. I'll set that stuff there. I'll go clean the spring up. And now we'll screw that. Put the screw back through there with the spring on it. Screw it down. Screw it down to where it's holding the throttle plate open a little bit. We will adjust it further when we're setting the idle speed. All right, good there. Next up, let's take care of the float. We'll grab our new needle seat and the gasket, screw it in here. This one, of course, is a little more expensive than the original. Slot's a little smaller, so I had to go get a dime. Tighten that down. Don't put that in a vending machine. <laughs> now we'll set up the float. It's got a little spring you can slide out the old needle and as you can see the new needle is built different it does not use a clip to hold it on to the float so we'll just put it in there no clip set that stuff aside I generally save all my old carburetor parts just in case Put that in there. Good fit. Now, take the float. Does have a new pin. We'll put the float in there. Slide the pin through. And we're gonna have to make a little bit of adjustment, it looks like. Because the closest area of the float is supposed to be a quarter of an inch away from the body. So let me get my little calipers. Now the float needs to come up a little bit. So I'm going to pull that back out. And you can see there's a little bend there. I'm thinking if we straighten that out. That ought to be pretty close. We'll work that. Of course, make sure your float's not full of gas. In case it's sprung a leak at some time. Okay, setting that back on there. 
this side needs a little more. You probably can't tell it, but that's pretty much spot on. Where the float was angled before, now it's all nice and level. And it's at a quarter of an inch. So float's good. Let's make sure your pin doesn't fall out. Now, we'll go to the bottom here. I'm going to take this uh, emulsion tube, make sure it's clean. I'll hit it with a little compressed air and solvent, and then we can put it in. And she's all good to go. See the three little holes on the side. Make sure those are open. Make sure it's clean all the way through the middle. It has a gasket. Put that gasket on there. Put that in. And we will screw it down into place. Make sure not to over tighten it. So that's in there. What have we got left? Then jury. And it will only go, like I said, that bell shape goes up. But it's got a flange right there, so that'll only set down in that one way. Will only set down in one way properly. Yep. Gotta fit that through the gasket. Have that ready to go. Now we'll bring this over. Make sure that's setting like it should. This over. Fit it around everything. Got to make sure that the uh, pin for the floats in between the throttle body or in between the sides of the housing. Hold it, get everything lined up, and now we'll start putting screws in it. Make sure the uh, body goes together right. That'll tell you you've got that Venturi up in the right spot. You can see it down through there. Have to fiddle with your gasket a little bit to get it lined up with the bolt holes. And crisscross pattern. Snug that down. Thing I didn't mention before, but in the in the neck here, there is holes on the throttle wall that uh, let idle fuel, idle air, everything in. Make sure when you're cleaning the carburetor to get all of those blasted out and clean. Idle still works, choke works. Let's put in the idle screw next. I'll clean it up a little bit, it and its spring. And we'll slide it back together. Where'd the hole go, there it is. I'm going to put just a little bit of grease on those threads. So that is going down to that cast iron housing. We'll screw that down. I'm going to make sure you're not just looking at my arm. We're going to start out at the factory settings and then adjust all this. So lightly seat it. Don't crank it down in there because you'll end up damaging the needle. And lightly seat it. Take it out one turn. Next up is the big main needle. Same deal, we'll go to factory setting on it. Take it all the way in. Where it's lightly seated. In half and one turn. Next up the fuel elbow. I'll go blow a little bit of sediment off it. And we'll put the fuel elbow in. Got a little thread sealant on it. Aim it straight up for the pipe. Now we got the plug on the bottom. 
cleaned and lubed up the throttle linkage, so we'll snap it on. Looks good. Now we're ready to put this back on the track. Yeah, I put a little bit of gasket goop on both sides of the gasket because you don't want an air leak there for sure. Slide that up in place. Throttle line. Now let's make sure the throttle. Yeah, everything still pivots good. Snap that on to the governor arm. Snap that. Thing works like it should. Now I'm going to go ahead and turn the fuel on. Make sure we don't have any leak. In case the float doesn't work, should run out here instead of it. That way we'll be able to tell if it's leaking. You can see it filling in the sight glass. All right, it stopped running into the glass. It's not dumping out of the carb, so that's a good sign. We'll run our choke rod back down through here. Okay. It works about as good as it ever did. <laughs> now we need to put on the air pipe. I find my other clamp. I need to run a bracket from that over to the exhaust clamp. It'll probably be good to hold it. But I'll fasten that up some. Alright, about ready to start it up. Well, before we fire it up, I just got a brand new proof meter and cable came in from Steiner. So we'll get that in so we can see what RPM we're running at. Okay, let's see if the old girl will run. Let it warm up a little bit, then we'll start making some adjustments. New tack is working, that's good. Supposed to adjust this to where it idles at 400 RPM. That's freaking slow. I'm working with the throttle stop here. We're going to give it We're turning this screw in. Turning it in richens the mixer because it cuts down on the airflow. Remove that in a little bit. Now we'll work on the throttle stop. We can't get a steady slow eye. It's still idling around 900.
ended up going back and forth adjusting the idle and the uh, mixture screw. And I'm sitting there to idle at about seven. Four is just crazy slow. This sounds plenty slow for anything I need to do. And that ended up at about three quarters of a turn out on the idle screw there. So it's a little richer than the, the book set. But that gives you a nice, no hesitation, acceleration. And a nice idle when it comes back down. So now let's rev her up and set the high speed. Okay, on the main screw here, turning it in leans the mixture out. You're supposed to rev it up, turn it in until you start losing a little power to back it out. So we'll try that. Well, that is the best that's ever ran. Main was still right at one turn out. The low ended up being about three quarter. So that's fine. That's just a little richer than book setting, so I'm happy. The governor is working like it should. The uh, the throttle quadrant moving it through its range is moving the RPM like it should. Because when I started, anything less than about here would kill it. Full throttles, full throttles. I had no idea these tractors didn't turn any more RPM than that. Like 22, 2300 just sounds like it's screaming. But I'm going to get a new quadrant because these are all worn slick. And it doesn't. It stays okay, but not as good as it should. But I'm going to call that a day. I like the new tachometer, proof meter, whatever you want to call it carburetor looks good everything works like it should governor's working like it should i'm a happy man after taking it out and putting it under a load the uh it needed more fuel in the main circuit so instead of a one turnout where it was starting to lean out and lose rpms it's back up to uh, about a turn and three quarter just like it was before and that holds rpm good runs good accelerates good so i'm happy with it the governor's working good the throttle's working good you can use the full quadrant on the throttle now you accelerate the governor picks up speed everything's working like it should so i'm really happy thanks for watching